G'day everybody, welcome to our very first video for 2023. My name is Anthony, I'm from Evotech Pacific. And before we get started, I wanted to just say, I hope that uh, everybody who celebrates Christmas had a fantastic Christmas with their family and friends, a wonderful new year. And for everyone else, I hope you have a prosperous 2023. Be happy, be safe, and let's get into this particular video. So. We're going to look at creating this locket top here. And uh, this is going to be using Matrix Gold version three. We'll be using our Parve placement tool. Also the Parve prongs. We'll be using things like Boolean intersection and a few other really cool tools that I either haven't used in the past or haven't spoken about. So let's get into this video. Okay, so let's talk about stage one of this design. We'll bring in a curve from our curve menu and I'll bring in an ellipse from F4 and let's type in uh, 10 hold down shift and left click and then we'll type in 7 and left click again so it gives us that curve which we will put into a job bag all right the next thing I want to do is uh, switch to my red layer color just so I can see what I'm doing I'm going to click on my line tool and turn on my grid snap here and just in the top viewport here I want to take it up three so one two and three and take that across to there grab this guy and we'll just right click mirror to the opposite side there so we end up with something like that let's grab these guys here and we'll rotate these around negative 30 degrees something like that there yep that's cool and I'll also drag those up just so we can see them a little bit later on. All right, we can turn off our grid snap now and switch to this curve here. Go into our tools menu and we're gonna use our profile cap here. Now I wanna take this profile cap up to 1.5 mil thick. So uh, we'll just use our little handle here and take it up to there and then we'll hit enter. That gives us a surface, obviously it's not capped, but uh, it'll provide us with everything we need for the next stage of the operation. So we'll grab everything there and put that into a job bag. Okay, so stage two, we're going to project these curves uh, down to the surface, but before we do that, we're going to uh, just go into the top viewport here, and I wanna offset this curve. So I'm just gonna use a standard offset tool here. Uh, I've got that set at say 0.5 of a mil, so uh, I want it on the inside there. Do the same thing for that guy there. And uh, we'll now select these tools and project those down to the surface. So uh, you can find the project button down, scroll all the way to the end there from object and hit project. The command line will ask you for your surface and then hit enter and that'll project those lines down there for you. So you end up with something that looks like that. So these guys here we don't need anymore, we can delete those. And the next thing we'll do is extract an isocurve from this surface here. So click on the surface and scroll all the way back and click on extract isocurve. Now all we need to do is adjust the angle here to 180 and we can determine how far up that position of that, uh, that isocurve is. So I'm going to take that to about say there I think, maybe about there, and then hit enter. All right so now that we've got all of that there it's probably a really good idea to job bag all of that. And we'll then uh, turn off that green layer because we're gonna do some trimming. So we're gonna grab everything here and we'll go to the trim tool and trim away what we don't need. So I don't need that and I don't need that and I don't need that. So for this side here, so you guys are gone. and we'll hit enter. We'll make sure we join all of those curves up. It's gonna be really important. And so we should have three closed curves, which I'm gonna put onto that green layer there. And 
these two I might put onto the blue layer. Just like that. Alright, so now that we've got that there, let's bring back our green surface. And I'm going to offset this surface. Go into the surface menu and click on offset. Now you'll notice that by default the arrows are pointing upwards. We need those to flip. So in the command line, just click on flip all. And then type in a distance that you want. So I'm going to type in, uh, say, 0.5 and hit enter. And that'll break history, which is no problem. But uh, you end up with this surface here, which is what we want for the next stage. So we're going to grab everything there and put that into a job bag. Okay, for stage three of this design, we're going to create some inserts into this piece that we've created. And to do that, we've got a cool tool in the, uh, the surface menu called Pull Push. So I'm going to click on that. The command line will ask me for the curve. And you've got to do these one at a time. But uh, I'm going to take that up to 0.2 and then hit enter. It's going to give me the original Rhino surface as well, so I'm just going to uh, put that onto the grey layer colour there and just switch that layer off. And you end up with something that looks like this. Now let's put this onto that green layer again. Um, we'll do the same thing for the next one, pull push. Select the curve. And take that up to say 0.2 mil. And then the same thing for this top section here. So grab that curve and take that depth up to 0.2 and then hit enter. All right, so let's put that onto our green layer color there. You can see what we've got now. We've got uh, our three different inserts into this piece and that's where we're going to set all of our uh, gems so we'll take care of that with the next stage okay so in stage five we're going to extract some surfaces from here and lay some gems out so we'll go to our solid menu and we're going to click on extract surface so we'll extract that surface there that one there and we may as well do these two at the top there as well and hit enter now let's put those on to say this, uh, this blue layer color here. There's uh, a little bit of a problem. I'm gonna turn that green off and maybe turn this, uh, this guy here off for the moment. And what we've got are, when we extracted those surfaces, we've basically got two surfaces here. Now we can join these up simply by clicking on join there and that'll join up into one open poly surface which is fine but when we go to our next tool in the gems menu called parve and select our surface and enter then nothing will happen and the reason for that is the surface itself kind of needs to be rebuilt there's a few different ways that you can do that but the way that i'm going to do this particular uh, exercise is i'm going to delete this uh, well, actually, before I delete it, uh, let's put it onto the green layer color there. Turn all of that on. I've got a few different layers happening here. So let's turn off uh, that blue layer and let's put this onto uh, that blue layer as well. All right, so what we've got here is our open poly surface. And I want to go into my curve menu and I'm going to duplicate the edges of it. So to do that, we're just going to select it and hit enter. And what we end up with, if we uh, delete this, we end up with these. Now these are all grouped together so we can ungroup all of that. I don't need you, so that's gone. And what we've got is one, two, three, and four different curves. We're gonna go into the surface menu now and we'll use a tool called Curve Network. The command line will ask us to select our curves in the network, so we'll select all of those and hit enter. And what we end up with is a new surface there. Um, it's, um, it's not too bad, let's see if it'll work. We can always adjust different options 
uh, here as well so you know if you wanted it uh, a little bit looser or if you wanted it you know more complex then you've got options there as well uh, to play around with but I'm going to um, you know make it a fairly simple surface and hit OK to that. Now when I select it and now go to my gems menu click on Parve you'll see that it automatically lays out uh, these Parve gemstones here for us or this pattern here. Uh, now you'll see that the uh, the panel on the right hand side here allows us to adjust you know the layer uh, sorry not the layer the diameter uh, of the gem layout itself and we can play around with that all we want we can increase or decrease the distance in between each gemstone here the default that comes out is 0.2 and I think I'll leave that as is um, the tolerance below dis uh, distance and the tolerance above distance by adjusting these if I take this up you know a few uh, you may or may not see too much of a, um, uh, a uh, distance there uh, sorry a, uh, a difference there uh, I think I just decreased that uh, distance there so let's just take that up to 0.15 maybe um, and the distance from the border is uh, currently set at uh, zero but if you you know were to you know increase or decrease that then you'll see the pattern will change accordingly because it's working on the the outside border of the surface uh, so I'm going to take that back down not that far um, you know, to zero and uh, you know your translation as well so we can play around with the different translation options there and you know perhaps come up with some different options closer to you know a particular edge of a surface so you know if we want to bring those up a little bit closer uh, to this edge which I definitely do want to um, then we can you know keep playing around with that until we're happy with where it's sitting and as we obviously bring those you know closer to this edge any gaps here should be filled in uh, by the um, uh, by the parfait builder it should uh, bring out some more gems same alternatively with the uh, the Y uh, that'll move those you know according to uh, that option there and uh, I'm not going to worry about that I'll leave that as is. Now our rotation uh, rotates the pattern around so at the moment we've just got our standard rotation but if we uh, move our rotation here you can see that it will adjust all of our uh, gem patterns uh, to different, uh, uh, different options there and you can run through those and you know, see what it has to offer. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with the, uh, the first one that seemed to work the best for me uh, and I'm also going to take these down to 0.1 uh, so 1.1 I should say to you know, play around with that a little bit more maybe uh, you know bring that translation in just a touch closer uh, to that edge and I think I'm okay with where that's sitting at this point in time so once I'm happy with that particular layout uh, if you do need to adjust uh, the layout more then that's okay no problem we can do that with the next tool so I'm going to hit OK to that that will set those gems in there for us now the next thing we're going to do is click on gem springs now this is going to enable us uh, the ability to adjust where all these gems are on this surface so the command line will ask us for our gems and hit enter and then our surface and enter again now the cool thing about this is that uh, we can adjust a gemstone by itself so we can click on one of the gems it'll highlight that blue color and we can kind of bring it you know closer to say that corner if we wanted to and by doing that it'll stretch and uh, you know work all of those other gems with it so you know we can kind of bring that a little bit closer to where we need it to be and you can keep doing that all the way along you know it will adjust you know the gems and the spacing in between those gems accordingly so we can keep playing around there if you do need to add a gemstone that's easily done with gem springs as well uh, we can click on add gem and you can click on a space for example there and maybe this gemstone is going to be a smaller gem uh, that's okay I'm going to put a gem right there and uh, you know, let's see if one will fit here it'll probably be a, it'll need to be a smaller gem so I'll click one there and I'll click one just here as well that'll also be a smaller gem and when we're happy with uh, placing those those other gems 
we can hit enter and then if I want to change a particular gem so I want to change this guy here uh, I want to change him down to say about 0.9 and hit enter that'll adjust him down and then we can kind of move it in a little bit so it's not sitting on the edge there uh, same thing for this guy here I'll take that one down to 0.9 and enter yeah, hey, that's not what I want. Uh, let's go and go to Gem Springs again. Next, enter and that, and enter. All right, so we can click on this guy here. And point nine and enter on the keyboard. And for the rest of the layout, I think I'm pretty well okay with everything there. So I'm going to hit okay to that. And there we have our gem layout. So it's a good idea to bring back everything there and um, pop all of that into a job bag. So that one there. And then what we'll do is we'll delete this couple of surfaces up the top here and we'll grab this and all of our gems and just in the top viewport here we'll right click on the rotate tool so rotate with copy from F4 hold down shift and kind of move those around to there just like that and we end up with something that looks like that all right, so we'll grab everything there and we'll put that into a job bag as well Now that we've job bagged this, we're going to lay out our prongs. So we have a tool in the settings menu called Parve Prongs. So we'll click on that and we'll select our gems and hit enter and then select our surface, which is our red surface there. And it will place these gemstones out, no, sorry, these prongs out here for us. Now, uh, the default that comes out, I think is about 0.5 of a mil. You can adjust that either by using the slider or typing in a, uh, a, a definite parameter. Um, I'm going to render this piece. I'm not actually going to make it, so uh, I'm going to 0.3 of a mil and hit enter. That'll lower the height of those down a little bit more. Uh, if I wanted to later on, because I will be job bagging this, uh, I will be able to adjust that uh, for manufacturing purposes. Now, the other thing we can do here is play around with uh, a few different options in the side here. We can uh, adjust the height above the girdle, uh, the overlap as well. So whether we want those to overlap into the stone uh, so that uh, overlap there is about 0.2 of a mil and it's all automated so depending on what you place in these parameter boxes will determine how thick and how big these, these uh, prongs actually are. Now once I'm happy with that you'll notice that there's some areas here like here for example that doesn't have any prongs and we're going to take care of that with the next step. Now you also might notice that we've got areas like this guy here where we've got essentially two of the prongs you know kind of overlapping and we can adjust that pretty easily too. How we're going to do that is this we're going to grab these prongs and we're going to ungroup them and then uh, we can select one of that uh, and maybe I'll put that onto the grey layer colour there and uh, switch that layer off. I don't want to delete it because I don't want to break the history of this if I can help it. Um, but uh, then what we can do is, uh, well we can probably get rid of this one here as well because we're just going to have to replace it. Um, we can go into our prong on surface tool. So we'll click on that and hit our surface there then it's going to place a prong there for us now the first thing i do when i use this tool is turn off my prongs meshed for whatever reason that comes out as the default there and uh, I, since these are all poly surfaces i kind of need it to stay the same um, otherwise you might have problem not might but you will have problems uh, trying to mesh a uh, sorry trying to bully and union a mesh with a poly surface it's not going to happen so uh, we can adjust uh, our diameter down. Now, what diameter have I got there at the moment? Um, take that down to maybe to about 0.45 or so. And take that height down to, I think it was 0.9. 
1.3 that we had there before. And we're just going to grab the little position ball and take it you know, in to about there. We'll uh, move around to here and we'll you know, maybe place a prong there, maybe one there and there. And uh, I will place one just here, but we'll adjust that one down a little bit. Uh, take that down to about 0.4. Kind of just bring that position in a little so it's not hitting that uh, that edge there. Uh, I'll create maybe one there and there and uh, there and there. And the other thing you can do as well is um, you know use the uh, the prong on the surface tool to um, you know to fill in gaps. one here but um, I'm going to reduce it down a little bit more so we'll take that diameter down just so that it's not hitting or well, maybe not that small but um, maybe three five yeah I'm better with that I'll place one here in the corner and by doing that you know we can place some uh, in there just to fill in any gaps. Just so it's not so gappy. And uh, if you're ha happy with that then um, I guess you don't want to go too crazy with this because you know it might start looking like it's got warts but um, I'm going to hit OK to that and then we'll grab all of our purple guys and we'll do the same thing we're going to rotate copy those around so right click your rotate copy tool from F4 hold down shift and drag those around so that we end up with something that looks like that all right so then we're going to grab everything there Put that into a job bag. Okay for stage six of the locket here we're going to join up these red surfaces to the rest of the piece and just by hitting join there that'll break history and that's okay and then what we're going to do is select all of our gems and create some cutters so rather than going to the standard gem cutter I'm just going to go to the gem cutter library here and use my uh, standard heart burr just for this one here. If I need to uh, drill out any excess uh, ashes at all then I can do that uh, when it comes back from casting. So I'm going to go to my boolean difference tool now and click on the locket itself enter with any of the orange surfaces there and enter again and that will go through and boolean difference away and give me a preview just like that now you can see where some of these azures have um, you know poked through the bottom there I'm okay with that but uh, generally speaking as I said with any kind of parve work I prefer to uh, drill those myself uh, when it comes back from casting so I'm okay with where that's sitting at this point in time I'm gonna hit okay to that and then what we have is something that looks like this when we turn off that gem layer and we've got our rhino layer there we're going to grab that put that onto the gray layer color there just so it hides it and we end up having something like that which I'm pretty happy with all right so now that we've got that there the next thing I want to do is uh, bring out some text now there is a text builder in the tools menu here and it's uh, called text on curve it's not a bad tool it does uh, you know pretty much everything you need it to do but the problem with it is that uh, it doesn't allow me to rotate the 
letters around uh, this way so in a clockwise fashion um, I can tilt them you know I can turn them up around this way but uh, I can't rotate the individual letters so rather than using the text on curve tool and even the uh, dynamic text tool I'm just going to use a standard uh, solid text tool so this guy here but before I do that I want to do this uh, I'm going to grab uh, a curve out from the um, from about say there to the midpoint there all right and uh, let's grab that particular curve there and let's drag it up and project it down so we're going to the from object and project to my surface and hit enter all right, so now we'll have uh, that original, which we don't need now. And we've got our curve here. Now with that curve, I'm going to type in length because I want to find out what the length of that is. And it is 14.568 millimeters. So I'm going to copy that. Copy, and then I'll grab line up here and just in the command line just paste and hit enter when I'm happy so shift and enter all right so now what I want to do is get my text from my solid menu here and I'm going to type in VLN my wife's initials and uh, we're going to go with a different font this time maybe say something like this one here I might bold it as well if that's an availability and let's try that again there we go all right so uh, I'll leave the default as is because I know that I'm going to make some adjustments to this so I'm going to place that there and I need to scale that down just with my gumball the helps if you grab everything all right grab everything there except for that and scale it all down so something like that there maybe it might be a bit too big but uh, we can always work it a little bit later on all right so i'm going to place that down on that line actually i'm going to place it in the middle because uh, that's that's where i need it all right and uh, maybe space it out a little bit too so I'll just kind of bring that out of touch bring that out with that i don't know why these are all different but and uh, leave that there where it is all right so in um what i might do is i might group these together actually just uh, to save any that group and I'll grab these guys here and group those as well probably not the best font to use but it uh, should be okay for what I need all right so I'm going to go to transform and in the transform menu uh, under flow if we click on the white triangle there we've got flow along curve so select the objects to flow along the curve so it's going to be all these guys here and enter the base curve that one there and the target curve is this one here and they're going to flow along there uh, with it. so what I need to do is uh, probably need to make some adjustments here which I definitely need to do first of all uh, I need to considerably shrink these down uh, and I also need them to be sitting on the base itself so uh, not too far into the piece uh, but something like that is going to be and you'll see that we have that there now here's what I was talking about before is that um, at the moment we've got you know the uh, the initials you know going along this way and the tool in the uh, the text on curve tool doesn't allow you to grab a uh, an initial and rotate it you know clockwise or anti-clockwise so that's why I've had to use this particular tool here so what I can do is select just the V for example and if I rotate it like this 
then you'll see that it will also rotate as well, which is what I'm after. Um, now I kind of have to look at how that's, uh, uh, yeah, that's doing that. All right, so I might need to, I'm gonna undo that. I might need to scale these down a little. So i scale them down a bit more. Better say something like that there maybe. Yeah, that's better. And now I can grab this and I kind of want to rotate it and just check to see that uh, you know it's appearing as straight as I possibly can get it. All right, and do the same thing for that one there. So um, I'm okay with all of that. It's probably not perfect, but um, well, let's make it a little bit better. Yeah, that's a bit better. All right. And so with that there, we should probably job bag all of that. Okay. Okay, so once that has been job bagged, what uh, we're going to do next in step seven is we need to create a cap for this area here. Now this is where job bagging really comes in handy. So what I want to do is uh, I want to turn off uh, the red section there, uh, the purple section, don't need any of the gems there, um, but I uh, probably don't even need the blue stuff there anyway. So I'll delete all of that too. Um, the job bag that we need uh, is right back here number four job bag here so this one here all right so we can get rid of all these curves as well while we're at it um, but once that uh, finishes loading in we can then uh, just get rid of any of these curves so let's uh, super select and grab any curves we can delete them all and that's going to leave us with the section that we had booleaned and also uh, the other section. So what we want is we want this section here. We'll put that onto the orange layer color just for the moment and we'll turn off that green layer. So we've got this here. Let's bring back our red section and we just want to make sure that um, these are kind of poking through so I want to grab these guys here again and I just want to drag them down just a little bit further um, just so that they're definitely sinking through there uh, if you need to it's not going to hurt um, you know scale them up in one direction too and uh, you know that'll give you something like that now what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool in the solid menu called boolean intersection so I'm going to click on that and the first surface is going to be that guy there. Enter with these guys here. And we can hit enter again. And what it will give us is this. All right. And so when we bring back our green section there and hit OK, then uh, we can get rid of all this extra stuff. We don't need any of that. We don't need you. But it will give us this section here of initials that follow the profile of the actual piece itself they don't stick up proud there's no way that um, you know they're going to get caught on something or any extra you know is going to stick up and look pretty ugly it all matches really quite nicely so when we bring back uh, our gems and our prongs we end up with something that looks like this. So let's uh, shade it up. And, uh, and that is how we make that. So what we can do is, uh, if you wanted to soften it all up, we can go into our fillet tool here 
uh, so we can go to fill at edge. Uh, I might just fill at this by say about point, uh, we'll say point 0.2 and see if that works. Um, and we'll select that edge there and here, here and there, around here and here. And this is going to help, you know, the rendering stage as well because we all know that rendering doesn't like, uh, you know, flat edges wherever we can possibly not have them. So um, the fewer flat edges we have and the, the more soft edges we have, the better the render will actually look. So we've got that there. We may as well also do the underside as well, so it's like not going to hurt. So make sure you've got all of the edges, you haven't missed anything. And then we're going to hit enter and enter again. And, uh, and that didn't work, so we're going to control Z that and try it again. But this time, we're taking it down to say 0.1. And we'll try that. And maybe instead of doing the whole thing, uh, we'll just do this section here and see if it works first. And if it works, then theoretically, <laughs> everything should work. Uh, Alright, so enter and enter again. Yep, that worked, no problem at all. So we should be able to go around and do all the rest of the edges. Enter and enter again. Yeah, that's good. And same for this one here. Alright, so uh, that is how to create um, a piece with inserts using the Parve Builder um, and also the, uh, the Parve Prong Placer. Uh, we used Boolean Intersection in here to get this uh, you know, nice profiled shape of those uh, you know, initials and uh, and obviously all of our other booleans that we used um, i hope that helps if you've enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel it really really does help us out and uh, don't forget to click on the little bell icon that'll notify you of any new video content that we upload thanks very much for watching and have a great day